Why Michael Burry, Ken Griffin, and Charlie Munger are so bullish on China, despite a disappointing rebound. Most investors don't understand or subscribe to the Elliott wave theory. That's why it works. If everyone was aware of their social mood and their proclivity for getting caught up in market FOMO, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now, which is going all in since the global all-time high. We have watched as risk and complacency have both grown in lockstep, which means that bulls can be tactically right, while being totally wrong as to the inevitable outcome. Think of it as a winning gambler who doubles down with each hand until he ultimately gives it all back. Thursday was the highest greed reading in at least two years. Everyone who is riding this Ponzi rally higher has no exit strategy other than to believe. They alone will get out first. No one has informed them that's not possible. And they can't figure it out for themselves. Why Ken Griffin, Michael Burry, and Charlie Munger are bullish on China but not the U.S. economy. I will explain it all right after this. How you like that? How you like that? Da, 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 da. Look at you now, look at me. Look at you. Welcome back to the Audacious Money Witch channel where we talk about macro economy, stocks, bonds, and commodity markets. If you like any of these topics, you are intelligent. That's why you're here. And you know what to do and push my button if you like what you see in today's video. Because you're already a success, it is done when you join the Audacious Money Witch Club. This video is brought to you by my website. If you are a good boy, go to audaciousmoneywitch.square.site to add more meaning into your life. If you play your cards right and completely submit like my good boys do, then I will take you under my wing. Author of best-selling books, Goddess Cheryl. My good boys always get rewarded handsomely. You are such a good boy. You are such a good boy. You like hearing that, don't you? Hmm. You want to get into the bookstore. You want it to be real. You want it to be true. You want to join the Audacious Money Witch Club, don't you? Michael Burry and Charlie Munger are keep buying and holding Chinese stocks from their recent 13F filings. Although Munger said, I regret it, Alibaba is one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. In thinking about Alibaba, I got charmed by their position in the Chinese internet and didn't stop to realize they are still a darn retailer. Despite all his mean comments about Baba, he is still holding 300,000 shares. Action speaks louder than words, Charlie. We know. They have over $50 million betting on these Chinese stocks. If you want me to dig deep into Chinese Amazon, Baba stock, hit the like button to let me know if you're interested. I think the main reason is because China is cutting rates, doing QE, while the West is doing the opposite. Citadel founder Ken Griffin is still anticipating a U.S. recession, but holds a more bullish view on China, according to Bloomberg. In an interview in Hong Kong, the billionaire said he expects the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates one more time in 2023, then stop. Meanwhile, Griffin holds a bullish outlook on China. Although the world's second largest economy has fallen short expectations for a bigger post-lockdown rebound, he anticipates economic growth there to beat Beijing's own target, even as broader investor confidence remains tepid. There's a general level of uncertainty as to the level of growth in China today, Griffin said noting that his firm anticipates 
an expansion of more than 5%, were actually more constructive on growth. He added that regardless of who wins the next U.S. presidential election, Citadel's strategy in the region will not change. The scale and scope of the Chinese equity market is incredibly attractive to us as investors, he said. In May, institutional investor named Griffin as the highest earning hedge fund manager after Citadel's flagship fund climbed 38.1% in 2022. This week, the Fed finally paused rate hikes for one meeting while still vowing to tighten later in the year. The ECB tightened again yesterday. And Friday, the Bank of Japan continued their disastrous free money experiment, which now looms like a democles sword over global markets. A $3 trillion global margin call, merely waiting for risk off. Carry trade unwind does not require a BOJ, monetary policy change. All it requires is a massive yen rally, likes of which took place last fall during the yen intervention. Or a global risk-off event would cause massive short covering. Either way, note the correlation between tech stocks and the USD to the Japanese yen carry pairs since the yen intervention last October. Whereas before they were negatively correlated, now they are 90% correlated. The irony for the bulls is that the more they front run a real Fed pause, the less likely it is to happen. Why? Because investor FOMO feeds back into risk premia and loosens financial conditions which means that investors can only get themselves more and more looped up ahead of another tightening. What investors seem to forget is that the last FOMO melt-up also took place during the week of an FOMC meeting in January of this year. That was merely wave A. This pullback will make that one seem like a picnic. In other words, the only way the Fed can stop tightening is if markets crash. Otherwise, they have to keep tightening until markets crash. That is the bull case in a nutshell. Also, what happened in 2008, and more famously in 1981, was that inflation reaccelerated as soon as the Fed paused. U.S. oil rig count plunges to an annual decline. What the F? Stimulate inflation? Baker Hughes just reported that the total number of active drilling rigs in the U.S. tumbled by 15 last week to 687, down 40 rigs on a year-over-year -year basis. However, the entire rig count drop was driven by oil rigs. Gas rigs were unch, which pushed the oil rig count into an annual decline, down for five straight weeks. This is the first annual decline since May 2019. The questions we have are simple. With rigs now down almost 10% from the February highs, Will oil and gas extraction industry jobs start to decline? Will inflation coming back due to supply shock again? The number of fracking crews have fallen for four weeks in a row, losing a total of 34. Year over year, it is 23 fewer than a year ago. That drop in oil rigs suggests U.S. crude production is due to decline, which should, all things being equal, imply higher oil and gas prices if this trend continues. This is bad. 
If we get higher inflation print at any point in time from this week onward, then markets will be in meltdown mode. It will be Volcker 2.0. Another crowded trade is short treasury bonds, which makes no sense whatsoever. Speculators are betting that the Fed can thread the needle between rate hikes and hard landing. So they crowd tech, which is a deflation trade, while shorting bonds, which is a more inflationary trade. Nevertheless, as we see they don't have a good track record, speculators still don't believe the Fed will hike twice more this year. In summary, what it all comes down to is the fact that cycle denial is a very crowded trade. The German multinational bank's top research team believes Washington has sparked a boom-bust cycle that now is nearing its end stage. Douche Bank's top minds put U.S. recession chance near 100% and say avoiding a hard landing would be historically unprecedented. My book, Believe You Are Worthy. You are such a good boy for watching my video right till the end. Bye.